Kia ora and welcome to video nine in the series Insightful Integration. Uh, in this video, uh, we have a differential equation with a whole heap of constants in it. Uh, our first problem that's kind of involved in application. Um, it's, not a, it's not an overly difficult uh, problem. Uh, however, it involves limits and I guess that puts it out of the realm of a, a standard NCA integration question. Uh, so all the best with this and we'll see you after the intro music for the solution. Okay, I think I said in an earlier video of this series that if you see a differential equation it's most likely separable um, because there aren't that many um, types of DE that you can solve in NCEA. Um, However, if there was a hint provided, then maybe maybe a different technique would be used to solve it. In this case, there's no hint, so we'll look for separable. It's kind of sneaky, but this whole thing here can be treated like a factor, and you drop drop that down underneath. So if I drop that down there and bring the dt up there, seems real dodgy, but that works. I've got L over E minus IR, um, DI, and then on the right hand side we've just got dt and then we put an integral sign on both sides. The only variables in this problem are the current i and time. i is the dependent variable and the reason for that we're told l, r and e are constant. So when we're anti-diffing with respect to i on this left hand side we've got a linear function in the denominator l is a constant so it just stays there and we've got l times log of e minus i r so if I put a minus sign don't forget to divide by minus um, r which is the derivative of that inner function there and then on the right hand side we're integrating 1 with respect to t so we get t and then we need an integration constant somewhere so we'll just say here plus plus c we're told that the current of the circuit is zero when time is zero. So if we substitute um, into the current thing, we sub in zero into there, and we sub in zero into there, then we end up getting C, oh, I shall write that, I of zero equals zero. Therefore, C is equal to LN, L, capital L, for um, the inductance, LN, um, the absolute value of E, Capital E stands, um, what does it stand for? It doesn't say that there. It's energy in the circuit. Oh gosh, my my university physics has completely lost, lost me on that. But it's a constant anyways, and I'm sure it's a positive, so let's just drop the absolute value symbols. And then we're dividing by minus R. So we'll put a minus there and an R. So that's our C. Now um, we can go back to the implicit solution that we've got. I wonder if E is bigger than IR, and if that's the case, the absolute value symbols can drop off that as well. It looks like an absolute mess. I think I've said that quite a bit in this series already. Um, the question that follows, because it, it says determine the limiting current. So what happens as t goes to infinity here? Uh, it's not so easy to think about with this particular problem um, written in this format, but if the right hand side goes off to infinity, t gets really large, meaning that this this term here basically is negligible, does, does really nothing if you're taking away whatever that number is off infinity. So that right hand side goes to infinity means that the left hand side will need to go towards infinity as well. And the way that that happens is if this dude here, um, hmm, let me think about this for a second. If that thing goes towards zero, because the log of zero is undefined, but as it gets close to zero, it heads off to negative infinity. Remember that there's absolute value symbols there. Um, I was unsure whether E was bigger than IR. I think it is in the context, but again, dodgy physics. And then we've got a negative constant. L over minus R is a negative number. So if we want that to head off to positive infinity, like the right-hand side is doing, then E needs to tend to IR. E tends to IR. 
when t tends to infinity and because it asks for the limiting current i tends to e over r some ratio between e and r so that's one way of uh, of doing it it seemed a bit dodgy but we kind of subbed in infinity into the right hand side for the time uh, the other uh, way to do it is to make um, i the subject of the equation if we do that i'll let you I work this one out, but you want to rearrange that top equation, the implicit solution. Um, you can't always do this, but in this case you definitely can. If you rearrange this equation, it looks like this. I've done that before. Um, you want to check that, and then you say as t goes to infinity in this um, explicit solution, will we get e to the e to the minus infinity which is getting off to zero so this whole term here um, disappears really and we're left with e over r so we get the same answer as t goes to infinity i tends to e over r but it might be just a little bit easier to see that um, when you write it in explicit form